Highlighting history of suburban Sydney with the St Peter's Cooks River History Group. Our aim is to preserve and promote local history. We are based at St Peter's in Sydney's Inner West. Daisyville in Sydney's East was originally called Daisy Garden Suburb, Sydney's first purpose-built public housing estate. The 1909 Royal Commission for the Improvement of Sydney described the appalling living conditions experienced by Sydney's working class. A plan for purpose-built and affordable workers' housing was proposed by, and named after, John Rowland Dacey, State Parliamentarian. It was to be a suburb which focused on a mix of public housing and green spaces, based on British Garden Suburb principles. It was to be a model suburb like Richard Stanton's privately developed Haberfield. The plan was carried out after Dacey's death. Initially designed by architect W. H. Foggett, it was to occupy 443 acres with provision for shops, schools, churches, amusement hall, police and fire stations and a technical college. No sites for industrial or manufacturing purposes. Major roads radiated from a central point. All utility services were to be connected before building commenced. There were no back lanes or pubs which were synonymous with slums. In 1912, town planners Sulman and Hennessy modified the plan. Foggett subsequently revised Sulman's plans, introducing smaller, curvier and friendlier streets. Today, Daisyville bears the marks of both architects. The broad, Cook and Banks Avenues, designed by Sulman, are in sharp contrast with the smaller, more curved lines of the streets designed by Foggett. A competition was held for house designs. The estate was built on Crown land that had been reserved as a water conservation site. Construction commenced in June 1912. Sand dunes and scrub land gave way to roads and cottages. By 1913, construction through the sand dunes was well underway. Roads laid out with curbing and guttering. At one stage, two homes a week were completed. 67 houses had been finished by June 1913, and the first families, selected by ballot, moved in. The cottages had no front fence. A coping stone formed the front boundary. The back gardens were enclosed with five foot six timber palings. The Daceville tram line opened in 1913. It closed in 1957. A new light rail line from Circular Quay to Daceville opened in 2020. By August 1914, 104 homes had been completed. A police station, electricity maintenance depot, six shops and a community hall were erected. The multi-use community hall known as Daceville Garden Theatre was used as a picture theatre, Little Tivoli Theatre and a venue for vaudeville, boxing, wrestling, dancing and basketball. The building burnt down in 1985. A public school was established in 1914 on Astrolab Road. A new school on the current site opened in 1922. The first prefabricated classroom in New South Wales was erected in the school grounds in 1950. It was imported from Britain and was heralded as the first of 185 for the state. World War I impacted on the suburb's character and future. In 1916, 50 houses were made available for war widows and incapacitated soldiers. It changed from a worker suburb to one associated with the returned servicemen. The working class rental scheme became less important than the need to house returned soldiers. A baby health clinic was constructed in 1918-19 on Wills Crescent. The Daisyville Roman Catholic Parish was formed in 1919. A large block of land was purchased and the foundation stone for a church building was laid. 
By 1924, St Michael's Church school building had been completed. In 1920, the last rental cottage was finished, bringing the total number of houses to 315, just one-fifth of the original number of planned cottages. The housing scheme was abolished in 1925. Sand and snakes were a problem. Undeveloped crown land was sold. New buildings for St Michael's Primary School opened in 1939. The original church school building remains close to the school boundary in Hague Avenue. Amaris Brothers College for upper primary and lower secondary boys opened in 1954. The school closed in 1993 and the Catholic Education Office occupied the site. Today, Hartford College, Australia's first liberal arts school for boys, is located there. St Michael's War Memorial Church opened in 1968. In 1974, the New South Wales State Government proposed the demolition of houses to make way for walk-up apartments and high-rise building. The Daceville Preservation Society was formed and the Builders Labourers Federation imposed a green ban. The suburb's historical significance was recognised in 1978. A plan was devised to retain Daceville's character while simultaneously increasing the housing density. In the 1980s, the New South Wales Department of Housing embarked on a renewal project that would retain the suburb's character while allowing for a housing density increase. Historically significant streets and houses were conserved. Back streets were redeveloped. Buildings were constructed on land which had previously been rear gardens. Three rows of houses are now between Astrolabe and Busol Roads. Larger homes were subdivided into multiple apartments. Smaller cottages were given rear-facing second-storey extensions. Two-storey apartment buildings, sympathetic to the suburb's architectural style, were constructed. In 2020, 69% of homes were owned by the Housing Commission. The following year, the New South Wales Government began auctioning properties, transferring them to private ownership. The suburb's names have historical significance. Greer Street was named after the indigenous Gwigal people. Astrolabe and Busol Roads were named after two ships commanded by La Perouse, the French explorer, who arrived at Botany Bay just days after the first fleet in 1788. Cook and Banks Avenues, Endeavour and Solander Roads and Isaac Smith Street are linked to the first British East Coast visit. Burke and Will's Crescents were named after the explorers who attempted to cross the Australian continent. In 1961, Burke Crescent was renamed Colenso Crescent to one of four brothers who fought in World War II, two of which were killed during the war. World War I soldiers' names are given to streets. Major General William Throsby Bridges was Australia's first Chief of General Staff. Douglas Haig, a British Commander-in-Chief. Colonel George Frederick Braun, Commanding Officer of the 2nd Battalion at Gallipoli. Captain Albert Jacker, a recipient of the Victoria Cross. General Joseph Joffre, a French General. Today's parks occupy land originally allocated for green space. Roland Park was named after John Roland Dacey, the creator of Dacey Garden Suburb. Daisy Gardens forms a central gateway, the focal point from which the main avenues of the suburb fan out. Jay Lather, visiting Daisyville from Queensland in 1919, described the park soon after it was established. In front of the shops and Daisy Picture Theatre is a triangular park, well kept and green, with trees along the edge, still in their infancy, but giving promise of glorious shade in days to come. Bright beds of canners making a dash of colour. The David Phillips Sports Field is a recreational sporting ground in Astrolabe Park. Today, Daceyville, a heritage conservation area, has preserved its social housing beginning and retained its identity as a secluded, peaceful suburb. If you have enjoyed this video, subscribe to our channel 
It's free. Coming soon. Campbelltown, Colonial Outpost to Modern City. And check out our website, stpeterscooksriverhistory.wordpress.com.